Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be simplifying a numerical expression. We have to 45 to the power 6 times 75 to the power 7 all over 15 to the power 19. And I'll be presenting three methods, even though the first method is going to be kind of incomplete. So, let's start. For the first method, I'm just going to give you an idea about the magnitude of these numbers so you know what they look like. For example, 45 to the 6th power is going to be something that looks like this. And I think we can call this 8 billion something. And then 75 to the 7th power is obviously going to be much bigger. How many times bigger? Roughly 10 to the power 4 times, maybe 10 to the power 3, even less than that. And it's going to be something that looks like this. So that's going to be basically at the trillion level, 13 trillion something. And then finally, our denominator, which is 15 to the power 19, is going to be a really, really large number that has a lot of digits. So let me go ahead and give those to you. And that's going to be our number. So you can go ahead and multiply these two numbers, which is going to give you something like roughly 8 times 13 and then since the first number is 10 to the 9th level and the second one is 10 to the 13, their product is basically going to be about 10 to the power 22. And then whatever that number is, you're going to divide it by the denominator and you can kind of uh, try to estimate or, you know, just approximate this number and then plug it in here and you are going to simplify. But again, we're not going to get an exact answer. We kind of need to estimate the the whole thing, if we had a multiple choice problem, it would be easy to pick somewhat. So anyways, let's continue with the second method. As I said earlier, first method needs to be incomplete. Left as an exercise for you. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. The second method takes advantage of prime factors. In other words, prime factorization. As you know, in number theory, prime numbers are building blocks, and if you can do the prime factorization of a number that is very helpful for many reasons such as if you're trying to find the greatest common factor the least common multiple of two or more numbers or if you're trying to find the number of factors or divisors of a number you know so many different uh, things that we can find using the prime factorization also Euler's totient function uses prime factorization as well as so many other things Anyway, so it's helpful, and let's go ahead and take a look at it, see how we can use that to simplify this. 45 is basically 5 times 9. So what, one of the things that we, when we first teach uh, this concept, we talk about something called the factor tree. So 45 can be written as 5 times 9, and of course, 9 is 3 times 3. When you reach a prime number, those are the fruits, so you're going to circle them, and all the fruits are going to give you the prime factorization of the number. In other words, 45 can be written as 3 times 3 times 5, or 3 to the second power multiplied by 5. And by the same token, 75 can be written as 3 times 25, which is 3 times 5 to the second power. If you want, you can also put first powers, no big deal. And then 15 is just going to be 3 to the first and 5 to the first. Make sense? So those are going to be the prime factors. And one of the things that's really cool about prime factorization is that it's unique. So you're always going to get the uh, same answer no matter how you do the prime factorization for an integer. Okay, let's go ahead and plug these into our expression and see what we get. So we're going to replace 45 with 3 to the second times 5. And of course, we're going to raise it to the 6th power. And then we're going to go ahead and replace 75 with 3 times 5 to the second power. And we're going to raise it to the seventh power. And finally, at the bottom, we have 3 times 5. And that product is going to be raised to the 19th power. So let's go ahead and use the superpower property and product property. What do I mean by that? Two things. First of all, if you have a b to the nth power, that's a to the n, b to the n. And if you have a to the n 
or I should probably use different variables here. Let's say something like a to the x and then to the power y. This can be written as a to the power x, y. So these two properties we're going to be using here. Let's go ahead and see how they apply. For example, 3 to the second to the 6 is going to be 3 to the power 12. And we're supposed to multiply it by 5 to the power 6. And then that is going to be multiplied by 3 to the 7th. And then 5 to the 14th, because 2 times 7. And at the bottom we have 3 to the 19 times 5 to the power 19. Great. The next step would be to put together these powers. Uh, the powers with the same base, for example... 3 to the 12th power and 3 to the 7th power, when combined, you're supposed to add the exponents. So this just gives us another property of exponents, which is adding the powers or exponents when they're multiplied. So that gives us 3 to the power 19. But 5 to the 6 and 5 to the 14, by addition, gives us 5 to the power 20. And that's divided by 3 to the 19 times 5 to the power 19. We did not get a definite answer with the first method because I left it as an exercise and also I did not want to spoil the answer. But here we go. We're going to reveal the answer. 3 to the power 19 cancels out and then 5 to the 20th divided by 5 to the 19 leaves us with a 5, which is the answer. So in the simplest form, this expression is equivalent to 5. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the third method. Now, the third method uses something similar. Uh, similarly, uh, we're going to be using some factors, but not necessarily prime factors. So we're going to use the following fact that 45, 75, and 15 all have a common factor. Actually, the greatest common factor in this case would be 15 itself. So let's go ahead and write the 45 as 3 times 15. Write the 75 as 5 times 15. And just leave the 15 alone. Makes sense, right? Let's do it. 45 is going to be written as 3 times 15, but you're going to raise it to the 6th power. And then 75 is going to be 5 times 15, then raise it to the 7th power. And at the bottom, we're going to leave that alone. Now we're going to use the same thing, distribute the powers. 3 to the 6, 15 to the 6, 5 to the 7th, 15 to the 7th, divided by 15 to the 19th. And then we're going to go ahead and simplify this by actually putting together the same basis. For example, what happens if you multiply 15 to the power 6 and 15 to the power 7, right? That's going to give us something meaningful, isn't it? So these two will give us 15 to the power 13. Let's do those first. And then I do see a 3 to the 6 with 5 to the 7. They don't have the same base. They don't have the same exponent. But if we separate one of the 5s, this gives us 3 to the 6 and 5 to the 6, which gives us 15 to the 6, and then we'll have a leftover 5. Make sense? And then divide that by 15 to the power 19. Now, when you multiply 15 to the power 13 and 15 to the power 6, you're going to add the exponents, and that's going to be the same thing as 15 to the power 19, and the answer is going to be 5 again. And what was our original expression? 45 to the 6, 75 to the 7, and 15 to the power 19. And this simplifies as 5. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.